Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's uh, My name is Kevin Coyne and welcome back to the Venture Outfitter. I kind of miss our intro music, so we're going to have to get uh, we're going to have to get Kevin Patterson back on the guitar to uh, to 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 uh, to bring us in to the program every morning. Um, we're here today to have a Venture Outfitter uh, community conversation, and when I, we'll be having a little bit more informal conversations, kind of like we've done in the past. And it already looks like we have um, entrepreneurs from around the world that are going to be joining us, so that's pretty exciting, including some of our friends in Uzbekistan. So I uh, wanted to just start by welcoming everyone to the Venture Outfitter. Um, for anyone that's following along, a lot of times if you are posting, a lot of times that even though we're going to Facebook and we're going to LinkedIn and, and all that sort of stuff, one of the places that I'll be monitoring is LinkedIn. So if you want to, if you want to interact with the crowd, make sure that, um, and you're not in the studio audience, that's perfectly fine. Just go ahead and do it in the uh, in the LinkedIn, and I'm remembering to open that up right now. So, welcome to the Venture Outfitter. Um, thank you to Dual Works. Dual Works is the sponsor of the Tech Ranch uh, Studio here in Austin, Texas. We're right in the middle of. Um, right in the middle of Austin. Most people think our downtown area is the middle, but it's actually up, up here. Most of the AI work, Austin, artificial intelligence work and stuff like that actually happens more uh, no, north um, of the, the uh, of downtown. And what's interesting about that, this co-working place is one of the places that we've been working with. Linda Blackman that runs the place is a long-term friend as well as a tech ranch entrepreneur and happy to to be here with her and her team. Uh, if you're looking for special needs on your, if you're looking for special needs on your setup or whatever you might be doing, like especially if you're outside of the country and you need a mailbox for a point of presence in the United States, they really do a good job about that. So welcome to uh, welcome to uh, Duo Works and thank you, Linda and your team for for working with Tech Grants for so many years. Um, just telling you a few things about what's happening around Austin today, the ATX that stands for Austin, Texas Community Wide Impact Happy Hour is, is here. Tech Ranch is a proud sponsor along with Swan Impact. What is Swan Impact? Swan Impact is the Southwest Angel Network. But the thing that I really like about their mission is they're very focused around impact. That is just like Tech Ranch is focused around impact. We, we say we're focused around impact innovation, technology that solves some human need. Um, their, uh, their investment strategy, and they're an early stage angel investment strategy, their investment strategy very much aligned with that. So happy to be there. I will be at the Brewatorium later today. Uh, come join us if you're here in Austin. And if you're not, but in the future, you always can check our events calendar because we try to list some of the other events and especially now that things have really started opening up after COVID, you'll see a lot more events that are going to be there on the um, on the on the website. Um, we've been kind of light for the last couple of years, mainly because you know it's a, there's just not been as many physical activities in Austin, Texas. But we will have that as well. I know that one of our members actually has uh, a, another one, that, uh, another event that she wants to announce really quick in conjunction with the Royal World Affairs Council. Polina, did you want to actually say something about the event that's coming up? Yes, thank you, Kevin. So for all of you who are listening that are in Austin, Texas, uh, in partnership with uh, Tech Ranch, thank you, Kevin, for making for allowing me to make this announcement. World Affairs Council, we're having a holiday social on November 29th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. And it's invitation only. I'll send the link to our website. We do not have the invite posted yet on the website, but it will be invitation only. So please RSVP and it will be at the Neil Cochran Museum. So thank you so much. Anybody who's in Austin and anybody who's uh, traveling and will be in Austin for that particular day, you're more than welcome to come. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Paulina. Yeah, it, uh, the World Affairs Council has been a long-term um, partner of Tech Ranch as well. We're all excited to work with them. Um, World Affairs Council does a lot of, uh, since Tech Ranch works with all these different, uh, you were building all these venture bridges around the world, having the World Affairs Council involved has been really uh, supportive. In fact, with the um, general partner of the World Affairs Council yesterday, um, ben Ramirez um, hosted the uh, the ambassador to the United States of of Kazakhstan, and I got to meet um, His Excellency yesterday as well. 
kind of exciting to see what's happening in to our friends out in Central Asia. Some of them that have joined us inside of the uh, inside of the studio audience, the Zoom audience, um, and some of you might be uh, watching online on uh, on the streamings and stuff like that. So real excited to have you guys here and looking forward to building a deeper connection across the world. And thanks to the World Affairs Council for making part of that possible. Next week, one of our branding, actually one of our consultants, so Tech Ranch has a core organization and then we have a, a lar much larger group of, of consultants that get involved with uh, Tech Ranch. That that understands um, have a deeper understanding of how to work with ventures both in Austin as well as you know international. Uh, Christia Ma Madisi Hoffman is one of our consultants, and she's a branding expert. She's also got a very nuanced view of how to build a brand, whether you're a solo entrepreneur or you're actually a later stage startup. Uh, you know how really to build the brand for growth. So she's going to take us through a little bit of a workshop, a little bit of an overview. Um, and then for those of you all that want to go deeper you, with her, you'll be able to do that. But the um, main thing is join us next week. That's what we'll be talking about next week. And we're happy to uh, happy to have her here as well as um, real excited about working with her. So um, and then we'll have we're going to be publishing. We've got a couple of different things we're working on coming up after that, just to kind of give you a, a preview. Uh, yesterday, one of my top um, mentors is a gentleman by the name of Rafa Pantion. He's based out of Chile. This this gentleman is a worldwide expert um, or world level expert. He's a coach. He's a, been a friend of mine since 2003, um, where I met him in Chile. He's going to be bringing a program after that. We haven't finalized if it's going to be on the 17th or not, but he'll be talking about how do we transform ourselves and how do we transform a country. Part of the story that um, Rafa and I will be sharing, and it's it's really stuff that I learned from Rafael, but um, about how is it that in uh, those early stage projects that we did in Chile in 2003, you know, has now gone on to transform the country of Chile. Real excited about that presentation. We haven't finalized the date. It'll be more of a conversational type of thing, but it'll definitely be a don't miss kind of conversation because... This guy is an expert about how to transform your internal dialogue. And what's amazing, though, is he's taken it to the country level, not just the individual level. So we'll hear more about that coming soon. I'm hoping to have him on the 17th, but we're going to finalize that before we formally announce it. Which ties into this quote. If you think you can, or if you think you can't, either way, you're right. Um, I was thinking about Rafa in the conversation I had with him yesterday. Um, like I mentioned, he's a friend and a colleague, and uh, but just amazing. If for those of you all that know who Dr. Francisco Varela is um, in the personal transformational um, movement of the past. Now, Dr. Varela died many, many, many years ago, but um, um, Rafa. Rafael was one of his uh, top students. And so it's interesting to kind of get the sense to, to have that conversation yesterday, be, but be thinking about it in terms of this quote. If you think you can, or you think you can't, either way, you're right. We're gonna see something kind of profound as we kick off the community conversation. There are so many things that as entrepreneurs and individuals that we're up against, as we think about, can we or, or can't we make something happen? And the thing that's most difficult with regards to that is there's so many ways that this can be blocked. We're going to watch a three-minute video before we start the community conversation. And during the community conversation, I'm going to ask for your reflections about what do you think about the following things? What do you like? What do you think about this conversation? And truth is, we're going to be able to talk about anything and any everything that you want to talk about. I know that we've got some of our Uzbek friends here. Some of you might actually want to say, "Hey, you know, uh, follow up on stuff that happened um, a few weeks ago." But one of the things before we get to that part that I want to provoke is how easy it is to invoke learned helplessness 
in people. It's a really interesting, profound thing. And I want it, and since us entrepreneurs have to daily work, you know, really have to work to make things happen. It's profound to see how simple this is. Okay, with that, I'll play the video and we'll talk about it a little bit more, but uh, just wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction to what today's community conversation, well, it'll have some flavors around. Biggest adolescent is written all the way throughout this text. The biggest fear of an adolescent, Jesse, not fitting in, is not fitting in. You talked about acceptance. Now to understand how this happens and how this looks and what this feels like, I'm going to have you do an activity. This is not your own activity, and just this is this is not to tax you. These are easy things. This is just to kind of get you feeling what we're going to go over. So everybody, if you would take out a, a short piece of paper. I'm going to pass out these papers and uh, just keep them face down. And if you would, no one write on these, write on your own papers. Keep them face down. Yeah. Everybody have one? If you would, just do them one at a time, and I will tell you when to do them. Everybody turn it over. Just do your own work. And this isn't meant to be hard. These are anagrams. Just do the first one only. Go ahead and solve it. An anagram is rearrange the letters to form a word. Just one. Just rearrange those letters to form a word. When you're done, I need to see your hand raised. Okay, keep going. We'll wait. Keep your hands up, please. Just do number one. Don't go on. Don't go on. You, if this isn't meant to be difficult. Okay, put your hands down. Let's just go to number two. Don't even worry about number one. Go to number two. Solve that one. Again, when you're done, I want to see your hands up. Everybody's hands down. We're going to go ahead and do number three. For number three, rearrange the letters, and as soon as you do, go ahead and put your hand up. Here's what you need to know. You were both given two different lists. This side of the room was given these three words. The left side of the room, here you go. They were given bat. What would the word be? The second one, they were given lemon. Brian, the word? Melon. Melon. They were easy. The trick here was both of you were given the third word, which was the same. The third word was cinerama, which was American. Your first two words on this side of my classroom were not solvable. They were impossible tasks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. But here's what we did this for. I was able to induce something called learned helplessness in the left side of the room very easily within about five minutes. I want you to think about what happened to you, this left side of the room, when you saw the right side of the room raising their hands because they already had the task done. What happened to you during that time? Pretty profound stuff to the to think about how um, how simple that was. We saw it happen. Um, she said less than five minutes. I timed it. You know, it's like uh, there is a little bit of video that was cut out, but not much. Maybe about thirty seconds. Can you um, can you imagine what learned helplessness might look like in your own life? I mean, now the worst part about it is to be blind to it, to be blind to the whole idea, because, you know, like that, the one kid that we saw, there's the, the, the kid that like, when you're looking at the, the screen was all the way to the left, you know, he, we see his dumbfounded look. He's like, he's like, okay, how is it that people on the, on the other side are, are like, uh, 
are dealing with this thing. I mean, what's up? Why is it? And by the time they got to the third word, which the third word, American, um, you know, was a little bit more uh, complicated, right? It's a little bit more complicated. Uh, but, but if you believe that you couldn't on the first word and you believe you just couldn't on the second word, by the third word, you're done. All right, why is my, what's my point? My point is that even in the most subtle things, even in the most simple, subtle things, like a silly little anagram uh, word thing, you can actually have these profound effects. And the worst part about it is, as entrepreneurs especially, we're blind to how this happens during our day. And, I, you know, and uh, yeah, there's a bunch of really great uh, things uh, happening in the chat session. Uh, you know, Melvin says, good for us here. Um, Jack of is saying it's important to learn to, to important to know about learned helplessness. It's and it's important to unlearn it. But though the thing that I think is even harder to see is to see how it shows up, how it starts covering your eyes, and you don't even you're not even aware that it's there because you're kind of used to oh wait well you know I live in the following situation and I have the following things and. Here's one more thing that just blinds you to the possibility of what what you have. That I I want to provoke that that part of the conversation today because even in my own self, right? Um, you know, a little bit of a uh, update about me, right? I, I went to Uzbekistan, had an amazing time. The people in Uzbekistan are so heart forward, like they're just like they you know, it, it feels really really warm from everybody even people i met on the airplane it's really kind of funny and flying over there I, I told you all a couple of weeks ago about how amazing it was how sweet the lady that sat next to me was and i thought oh this is nice this one one sweet lady no it was the whole country the whole country is that sweet it just is it's pretty interesting and then you know i i i went through the whole process it was a very easy time since i've you know been in so many different countries there's a lot of times that uh you know we go through this um we go through culture shock i had no culture shock when i was in uzbekistan i have had culture shock in other countries that's another type of learned helplessness i know how to do all these things here in you know austin texas but then you know i walk into another culture and i can't do things in Uzbekistan, I had absolutely none, none of that, not at all. I've I got a lot of other countries I can tell you um, that I've I've had that issue. But um, one of the reasons that this idea came up about learned helplessness that's so powerful is um, I actually ended up taking some time off for this last week for something called a vision quest. Now, at some point, I'm going to go into more details about the vision quest. I don't think today's the time to really go into the details about that. It's a pretty hard, intense process. It was my vacation. But one of the great things about it is you have all this time to reflect. And in having all this time to reflect on dealing with that type of stuff, you know, like where you're in a really hard situation, you don't have any food, no water, you know, you're going through all the things that come up when you're actually, you know, in a stress condition like that. But I had time to think. And in having time to think, I could start to see in my own life, how I have certain elements of learned helplessness. And the worst part is, some of them aren't true. Just like in the example we just saw for the school teacher, some of the situations aren't true. And the thing that's the, the thing that's interesting about that is if we don't know that, and if we don't question that, and the thing that you're going to hear from Raphael when we hear from him in a couple of weeks, if you don't know that the there's a frame of, you know, might just be right before your awareness. If you don't know that, you'll never see it. And it will crush you and instead of being the you know back to the henry ford quote you know if you think you can or you think you can't either way you're right it can actually really layer things on that's what i wanted to bring up um i'd love to actually hear if there's like anyone that's in the uh, studio audience that wants to share about this i can share a few other stories about myself as well um but the, that that's the first thing that i think is a really profound question about how is it that we can uncover when we've run up against something that's maybe not really true, but it's like creating that kind of conversation inside of our heads and therefore limiting our performance. 
Interesting kind of thing to say. A couple of different people said, and why do you think it's because they can believe, to, yeah, he can believe, um, Jack of Ear said in the meeting chat, it can bring depression. Like, you know, a couple of little things, you know, happen and it brings you down a little bit. But if you keep on going, it can actually bring, uh, yeah, it can bring you into depression. I've, I've definitely dealt with that myself. Um, you know, it's it's interesting. You just have to, it, I call it in the coaching that I've done, I call it that uh, us entrepreneurs, we have to be what what I call self cleaning ovens. I don't know if you've seen like, you know, but the in olden times, they didn't have this. But now you have a one button on an oven in a kitchen that you can push and somehow the oven cleans itself. And we have to do that. We have to actually we have to, uh, you know, it's really interesting. We have to actually deal with that. Um, yeah, let's see the other thing that David just mentioned in the chat. I think this sort of thing is related to imposter syndrome. Yeah, if you actually have a little chink in your armor and you believe that you're an imposter, and then you get some data of Wayne, I can't, I can't fig figure out this anagram. You know, the the word exercise that the uh, the teacher is uh, saying. Yeah, you you're you can be up against something really, 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 really hard, really hard. So I don't know. I'm I'm wondering if anyone, um, everyone's quiet today. Uh, I would expect to I, to see at least one hand raised just thus far. Anyone want to uh, weigh in and say something about this from their standpoint? Huh. Okay. Well, no big deal. How about out there in the uh, in in Facebook land and LinkedIn land? If uh, one someone wants to say something about that too, it'd be interesting to hear. I know I'm getting messages on WhatsApp about this. And um, and and all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's all it's. Uh, I'm creating reactions, but no one that's necessarily wanted to say something, uh, say something about it right now uh, publicly. That's okay because this is kind of a hard conversation to to deal with. Um, Kim, you just came off of uh, I, off of uh, into video. Is that a signal that you want to say something to join us? Uh, no, it's a video it's a comment that I um, was uh, able to not drink as much coffee. Yeah, <laughs> well, you, so say say more about uh, what what are you saying? You're just saying you're just you couldn't sneak in any coffee. I'm I'm gonna use that as an excuse yeah. to sneak in some of my coffee. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much. I, I had to show my back to go get more. Yeah. Well, tell tell me this. Tell me this. When and in, in, is there an example that you're willing to share in your life since you've had a lot of different venture experiences and stuff like that, that, you know, what what happened in the video um, is live for you as an example? Um, it's um, it's continuing moving from telecom into healthcare <clears throat> into regulated um environments there's there's parallels but um the main issue i i find is that part of the um uh one of the challenges is that sometimes there's no new businesses there's just new lingo and new acronyms and the new opportunities you undertake are sometimes simpler than the acronyms um describe in other words by you know, by creating a shield of this, this is this is something new. It makes it not as easy for somebody to break in and understand what the what the challenge is or what the opportunity is, because um, yeah, it, that that's that's the general <clears throat> that's the the uh, uh, general comment. But I still face it every day because as we you know do these multiple grants, they change the process. Uh, you know, getting into the whole human sub subjects arena about what you have to do to you know qualify your products and do safe human subjects was it was a huge area that um, it's very important but it's also constantly changing and trying to get your your products qualified by an irb are very very challenging but it's gotten to a point where in two days i just i was able to repurpose information we had and and get a 50 page irb application done um, after several years of, of working with it. Yeah, we know it's interesting from the standpoint of like, uh, you know, e e you know, given that you have the experience you have to, to have that happen and then be aware 
of, you know, be able to cultivate that experience that, that then knows, oh, wait, I can uh, route around things. I have to, I have that happen all the time. Since I'm dyslexic, a lot of times I will have difficulty with words and then I'll actually, um, I'll have what happens, happened to me as a kid. You know, I'll, I'll be, uh, I'll be working on a document for a customer. Like right now I have people um, in Uzbekistan that are waiting for documents from me. And, you know, I'll start working on those documents. I'm like, I got it all figured out. I just need to put it down on paper. And then all of a sudden, boom, it feels kind of like, you know, my, um, my sophomore year in English class where I wrote a beautiful paper, but this was before spell check for those of you all that are going to give me a hard time about spell check. Why didn't you just use spell check? We didn't have spell check back then. Um, I'm a little bit older than, than I think uh, most people think that I am. And it's interesting because, you know, not having spell check, you hand in the paper, you know, Mrs. Guerrero said, when my English teacher said, wow, Kevin, what a great paper, but you misspelled all these words. So, you know, you had an A, but um, I gave you a C because you misspelled all this sort of stuff. And, and it's like, now nowadays, it's like, you don't have really have that problem and all this sort of stuff. You know, people, you can actually do that. It's a similar kind of thing. That same trigger can come back, kind of like what I just heard and what Kim said. Now I know how to recognize the feeling and then route around it to go do something else. So I don't know if that the rings true for you, Kim, or anyone else. It's just an interesting thing to think about. My professors thought I was just a bad typist. <laughs> understood, understood. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, thank you for that. Uh, I'm wondering, um, David, you, you've had a lot of things you just said in the chat. I'd love to have you come online and, 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 and share some of that live. Yeah, well, sure. Uh, I just what actually it's Kim sort of triggered me with what he said, because it's, it's actually a technique that I use when I'm delivering projects or, or, you know, managing people. When we start a new activity, a lot of times, you know, there's that psychological barrier barrier. And I, I've, I see it so much, you know, people are scared. They, they haven't done it before and you have to sort of hold their hands to get a, get them over that barrier, right? So what I'll do a lot of times is I'll set like, like milestones, initial milestones that are super easy to reach, right? And I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll talk them through and we'll, we'll get people, you know, sort of hold people's hands so they get to that first milestone and then it builds up confidence internally, externally, you know, people see you're hitting the milestones and stuff and then, you know, things get rolling. And I, that's a trick that I've just always used. And when Kim mentioned that, I just realized that's exactly what you're talking about. This can, this is how how you you avoid learned helplessness. Is it's a very human thing to get. And I think some people are more susceptible to it than others. Like say, me, say I think more I'm susceptible how to do, it. How, do, how do we avoid learned helplessness? How do we well, avoid it? What my trick is when I'm managing a project and we're doing something new is that I'll set some milestones that are really, really close to the beginning that are really easy to reach, right? To give people the feeling that they're, they're accomplishing something, they're moving forward and they've got momentum and it's a psychological yeah. trick and it works. And I do it every time I'm managing something. And I just realized that when Kim said that. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good thing to actually, it's like, especially when you're forming a new team, the mm -hmm. team can then have belief in itself mm -hmm. to, to work together, you know, get a few, I, I say the same thing. Let's get a few points on the board yeah. and then we can figure out other things from there. It's an interesting, interesting concept, pretty st straightforward about how profound that could be. Yeah. Good. Good. I was going to, I was yeah, going to bring ahead, up, a, yeah, I was going to bring up another point as far as the people that you surround yourself with is very important because mm -hmm. If you're with people that are constantly telling you negative things and nobody believes in whatever idea, whatever business idea you have, whatever project you're wanting to undertake, you know, it's that much easier for you to go, okay, never mind, everybody shut this down. Okay, that's not really possible, versus the people that will continue pushing you forward, even if they do give you realistic roadblocks that you need to anticipate, they'll still support you. Yeah, I know. It's interesting. It's like they can pick you up and support you, you know, and, and help you see that, no, you're not broken. You're actually just, you know, just you fell and that's all it is. And they can pick you up and, and keep you going. That's a beautiful thing. I would love to have um, have us hear from one of our Uzbeks. Um, um, Yakovir, uh, Yakovir, uh, you and I met at the U.S. Embassy for a speech that I gave there in Tashkent. Are you willing to come off of mute? And you've been giving some really great insight 
on the uh, uh, in text. How about sh share about it? Like, do you feel comfortable sharing about it live? I don't want to put you too much on the spot. I, I just for, to his credit, by the way, um, at the uh, I, I had five different speaking um, engagements, each one with you know somewhere around forty to sixty, maybe seventy people and stuff like that. Um, and uh, he took a big risk because he shared one of his, uh, his one of the business ideas that he has for how he'd like to shape the future of Uzbekistan. And it's really, it was really beautiful in the way that he uh, talked about it. So I hate to put him on the spot. I already did it once. And, um, as they, and by the way, one of the reasons you see all the smiles, like just on uh, David's face and Melvin's face, by the way, is they know exactly. I do that all the time with people because part of what we actually have to do is overcome that learned helplessness that a lot of time blocks us from from public speaking. So if you feel like it at all, I definitely want to invite you to actually share about that just because it would be, um, it'd be great to actually hear your voice. Um, that, that, yeah, he, okay. So I'll just mention, he says, maybe next time I'm feeling a little shy. That is to totally understandable. So I, I um, at some point in the future, I want to make sure that everyone feels comfortable. Actually, I don't want y'all to feel comfortable. I want y'all to feel inspired to take the risk to do uh, to take the next steps. But that that's okay um, because you took a big risk at the embassy when you actually spoke up about, about your vision for the world. And um, by the way, for the rest of the audience, uh, I was really moved by again by how heart centered the people of Uzbekistan are, as well as um, you know really thinking for their country. Um, very very powerful. Uh, powerful type of interaction uh, from that standpoint. So um, I'd love to interact. We can now switch on to other things and stuff like that. I, I, you know, every once in a while in a community conversation, I want to provoke a little bit more of, hey, let's look at how we can change ourselves so we can change our ventures and make it easier from the standpoint. That's where I'm looking, uh, you know, I'm kind of excited about this whole idea about how do I transform myself and then, like, how do I not just Kevin, but like, how do I, the entrepreneur, transform myself that then has this uh, end up transforming countries, or by the way, dot dot dot, transforming the world? It's a very, you know, powerful thought about what might be uh, possible with that. Um, do we have any uh, anyone else that like uh, part of actually? You know, one one of the things I did really want to say is I'm going to switch gears onto uh other things but um on the while we have since we're using zoom still while we're doing this i want to show you we are, are updating the the tech ranch um website there's going to be a number of other uh, updates that are happening you notice that the events are going to be a little bit easier to find uh events like the two events today, this conversation, and then the uh, community-wide impact tower. There are other activities that are happening around town. Uh, in fact, Christia's um, group, um, Jello, I guess you'll get that fixed right there. But we're, we're going to have a number of things. If there are other things that you're doing as part of your company and you're wanting the, if you're involved in the um, in the tech ranch at all from a community standpoint, we have a number of community leads that are. Uh, are entrepreneurs that are running their own areas. This is the community website for Tech Ranch. Kind of there's a start here. How do you actually do things inside of the community? There's a place where you can make requests to the overall community. Like uh, as an example, um, Isabel, one of our entrepreneurs from Costa Rica is looking to export. And so she posted in here, there's a general area. There's an area that people are posting different articles and things like that. An artificial intelligence. We have a number of artificial intelligent entrepreneurs. We just heard from David uh, Nichols. He's an artificial intelligence entrepreneur. You can actually find out what's happening here. The ed tech area. This is uh, got a number of different entrepreneurs that are solving different problems in education technology. Melvin, who we haven't heard from yet, but is in the studio audience, is one of the heads of that. And to be ahead of one of these areas, the, the thing about it is I want you to take advantage of the area. It's like by bringing these entrepreneurs together, you know, all these different entrepreneurs together around this one topic, they can leverage off of each other. And it's not that they're working for each other, they're working with each other. Funding investment, 
We just got this area started. This is a new site. We did not move all the things over from the Slack channels, mainly because there was a lot of the Slack channels are going away. But uh, health tech area is happening. Mental health tech as well. Those of you all know that um, that this area will be for some of the mental health startups that we worked with in the past. Human potential. Today's conversation. Um, what what is human potential with uh, with regards to these two? I was looking for a way of actually saying, how do we actually track how to help ourselves? Um, and so I use this these words. I'm not sure this is the right one because I haven't had a lot of people who come have come into this group yet. But this is so that we can get better. Like today's video was something I'm going to post here, and then I thought, now I should just post it there. Um, random is, is like if you just have random things you want to say. Senior care, there's a number of entrepreneurs that said, hey, we're working with different, um, uh, like as an example, my father's getting uh, to the point that I actually, I, I'd like to have other entrepreneurs that can say, hey, how are you solving this, these problems? And we have a number of uh, entrepreneurs in this space as well. Um, this is an extension of health tech, but it's going to have a little bit more uh, focus for entrepreneurs that are dealing with that. Then Women of Impact, Inez has actually got, is building a group. Inez is Brazilian American, has been spending time between Brazil and, and the United States. And she's putting together a women's group um, here. My, there's many other groups here for some of the different uh, groups that we're working with, it's some internal type of things. Um, but uh, but that's what this is for too. If you're not invited into it yet, um, post either, if you're on the um, LinkedIn stream, you can actually just post there, hey, yeah, add me to it. The only requirement we have for being a part of the community is you have to to be an entrepreneur that's committed to being part of the community. Um, the uh, and, and you know, you play fair and stuff like that. Don't spam people and stuff like that. But uh, but we're um, slowly but surely booting it up. I'm kind of, I really like it much better than I like Slack and much better than I like Mighty Networks because it's so much easier for me to configure. So we'll continue to see you advance about that. Okay, well, that was my transition time to, uh, to see if... Um, there was anyone else that wanted to bring any other community conversation? Since I started with a zinger around the uh, the learn helplessness issue, I'm just uh, uh, I'm wondering uh, what you guys think. If there's any other topics that you'd like to talk about, um, David, Denise, Paulina, oh Melvin's got his hand up. Go right ahead, Melvin. Hey Kevin, thanks for uh, the shout out a while ago about edtech, and you know I I think about it growing up. I was marginalized. And I did not realize that when I was that young age until, you know, sometime later in my life. And, and you know, that's a bad place to be. It, it took me down a, a bad road, several bad roads. And then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm wonderful. I, you know, now, instead of asking, who the hell do you think you are to bring this up, to ask this, to, to, uh, to uh, posit this, this, uh, solution now i say who who do you you know who are you not to do it and and so there's a lot of people that got me to that that position i you know am i making sense kevin yeah yeah you're saying who yeah you it, but what i hear you saying is you had people who said melvin call you can't do that and you're now now and and so you took that on about oh wait i can't do that i can't do that you got marginalized and it ended up just kind of leaving you in a place where you couldn't find anything else and, and now you're 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 flipping the conversation uh, in your own head right to saying hey Wayne who am I not to take on the following thing yeah. the, the similar question that for me that I asked by the way since we're sharing questions is I came from a kind of screwed up childhood as well and but one of the things that happened is um and, and I, one of the things that, that those of you all that know me well know that when I walk into the room, one of the reasons I can work with 400 people in a room is I'm hyper vigilant. I can pay attention to at least 40 people at one time and totally be present with them. And people are like, okay, how is this? This actually happened with, at the IT Academy um, when I was in Tashkent at this one, at this one event. Uh, there was a little bit of language barrier in this one speech out of all the speeches. Um, 
but I was able to pay attention to all the students there, there in the room that I was speaking with, you know, like, how is he doing this? Because he doesn't speak the language, you know, and, and yeah, I don't speak any Uzbek and I don't speak any Russian. Um, so how, how are you able to do that? I kind of have this hypervigilance. Okay, that's the gift in what happened in my childhood. But the problem was there was always, I was worried that something was wrong. Something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. And so that's why I became hypervigilant. Now the question, just like Melvin has a question, and that's a really powerful thing for those of you all that are watching. The, uh, the powerful thing is to have a question. When you recognize that you're like in the something's wrong kind of mood, then you ask the question, and my question is, what if everything's okay? If I'm in a fight with someone I care about, all of a sudden, if I just interrupt it by saying, what if everything's okay? And then, and then, and by making it a question, by the way, it's important that uh, notice what Melvin said and what, what I'm saying is by having it be a question that you ask yourself, it actually will interrupt the cycle. If you just say everything's okay, that, 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 do, that statement doesn't have the power of the question. What if everything's okay? Is it okay? It actually forces the mind to do that. Uh, each one of you might have a different question that you actually have. Melvin, Melvin's was, well, wait, who is it that I, I, I can't do that? What do you mean? I'm going to go do that, right? And you can hear in his career stuff that he's done like that. In, in my case, it's, well, what if everything's okay? Okay, Kevin, it's okay. You can, you know, you can put down the, you know, some of you might accuse me of drinking too much coffee because I'm kind of a little bit hyper at times and I'm watching every little thing and I'm, you know, um, one of my friends just recently said, how is it that you're able to pay attention to, you know, where the pens were lined up on the desk in the other room when you walked into the, into the, uh, my house, um, into the, the person's house? And I'm like, yeah, you know, that's hypervigilance for you. So what if everything's okay? I could relax a little bit more. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting thing. And see, there's a few other things that... Uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, it, you know, a uh, couple different people. I hope it's okay for me to use y'all's names, but you're saying in, in the chat session, saying I've had these kind of feelings when I was a child because my parents left me with my grandmother. And, and you know, at the time, the world was really awful. And so I felt like I was alone in the evil world, right? Yeah, that that's a thing. And so one of the most powerful things to do in that case is to ask the question, you know, isn't everything okay right now? Or I'm not sure what the question it would be for you. You need to refine it yourself, just like for me it is. Um, David just mentioned, I also have channel time trauma. It's a, a common thing among a lot of entrepreneurs, I think, but it's hard to find a place where you can be open and honest about it. For sure, Kevin has created a space, though. A nice aspect of EO. I hope, I hope that that's one of the things that we do. Um, there's a professor named Stephen Blank at the um, at Stanford University, who uh, he's one of the experts in in the lean startup um, processes, and he he wrote a book called um, the Four Steps to the Epiphany, which is about you know getting your products out there and in in uh. But what's also interesting is he did some studies, um, he did some studies about entrepreneurs and said the num the amount of entrepreneurs that have some serious type of psychological thing that happened to them is actually fairly high and uh, building companies is a coping mechanism well now because everyone went through covid together um everyone has something you know i don't think very many people went through covid and the covid economy without some kind of scathing and i'm not saying that everyone's broken i'm just saying that there's like a there's now something that that, that it's it's interesting to see so yeah I do hope that this ends up being, you know, that when we talk about these provocative kind of questions and stuff like that, you know, we'll be talking about branding next week and we'll be talking about, you know, other, you know, other more traditional venture type of things. But I do want to have a safe and comfortable space for working through this sort of stuff because it'll make me more powerful. And part of the goal here for us to be working together is to be more powerful so we can actually build these ventures to take on the world with. 
Yeah, and uh, Jacoby was, was mentioning, I still have these kind of feelings, but it's still uh, it, there. It's not as bad as it used to be. Um, that that is a good aspect of having courage to overcome things. It takes the courage to overcome things to then go through the process of healing. You think that the healing happens first, but the thing that sucks about it is you have to have the courage to go hit it first. And because you hit it first, then you actually start going to the other side of learned a helplessness. You actually start learning that you're capable, learning capability, right? And, um, you know, there's a, there's a psychologist called um, uh, Adler who actually talks about the will to power. That is, the, you know, that as you learn how to be stronger, you end up becoming stronger. And, and as you learn that you can actually do this, like what David was saying earlier about momentum, by having momentum, you can actually do that and you know keep on getting to the next level. I know we have a number of people that uh, we're coming to the end of the time together. And I've already had a, a handful of people to say that, uh, that they're actually having to leave and stuff like that. Um, we try to keep these to an hour, especially for our friends that are on the other side of the world. Um, it's uh, almost 10 o'clock, uh, 10, 10 o'clock in Uzbekistan, and I'm really honored by the fact that we had a number of people uh, come. Uh, Zoda, uh, great to see you here. Yakovir, great to see you here as well. I should have uh, done a shout out to a couple of the other people that were there earlier. I'll make sure that we do this as part of a follow-up. We will be setting up a, a, a unified telegram um, uh, link as well as if you haven't been invited into the community site just yet, we're we're working on like an easier front door to uh, to invite you in and stuff like that. But um, part of what we'll do is we'll do this through uh, the the Telegram session, uh, the Telegram groups that we've set up. For those of you all that don't know what what is Telegram, Telegram is just like WhatsApp. It's just and for those of you who don't know what WhatsApp is, it's just like instant messages. It's just a little bit easier to configure and it's much more popular in um, in Europe and in Asia then uh, WhatsApp is more popular in Europe and in Latin America or in the Americas. So it's uh, a little bit easier to use. So we'll take advantage of that and we'll have them all pointing into the community site. So uh, do I have anyone that wants to say anything profound before we close up uh, for today? Any, any, anyone? I see Omar is in the house. So I'm, I'm just looking at him because, uh, oh wait, David Nichols got to say something. Go ahead. No, I just uh, I don't want to uh, uh, interrupt Omar if he wants to jump in. But I just I was saying, you know, that uh, uh, Yavo here was saying that, you know, maybe that it would be good to have a session where we talk about, you know, how we deal with these kind of uh, this stuff, like you're saying, like they, they learned helplessness, but or, you know, maybe childhood trauma or these things. You mentioned you went on your vision quest. I was really hoping we would hear about that today, because I think that's a way of you dealing with, you know, your issues and a lot of people that are really driven, you know, to, to make changes and, they, and stuff like that, I think they do have some of these kind of problems. And it's, it's, it, it helps to talk about it. It helps to hear other people's experiences. And I, I would uh, be happy to do that. And I think you really have created a safe place to talk about these things because it's all very constructive. It's not like we're beating up each other or something. It's like, we want to deal with it. We want to get past it. We want to move forward. And it can be done. Wait, wait, and, and I would even go farther than that to say, if you can't fix it, feature it. Some of the things that I, you know, that I dealt with in my childhood um, really are deep wounds, but in some ways they make me absolutely fearless. Like, I, I don't know anyone else. I mean, you know, in my case, you know, there's the situations that made it difficult and stuff like that. But on the other side, you know, when I go get to go 7,000 miles away and I have, I meet people that are hand over heart and like, you know, totally just the most welcoming people that you ever met. It's just like, I mean, I, I didn't have to be fearless, but the fact is, you know, like going into the unknown, my childhood preparing me for that. What I mean, what I mean by that is in each one of these difficulties, there's a gift in it. There's a gift in, in that difficulty. Um, and uh, there's a book that I read that uh, that actually says says it this way. They say the um, they 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 say it this way. They say um, if you can't fix it, feature it. You know that is and and some things aren't supposed to be fixed. You were given a gift with some of the difficult things that happened 
it produced in you a certain way of being. There are things to overcome about that that sometimes aren't aligned with what you want to have happen in the world. Um, and uh, but then from that you can build. And David, I will I will do some more stuff on talking about. Um, I haven't figured out how to share about what happened in the vision quest yet. I had four profound things that came to me in the, in the vision quest. And for those, those of y'all that didn't hear the, the short introduction about what I was saying earlier, um, sometimes you, you know, for me, I've done a lot of different trainings, a lot of different processes and stuff like that. I've done 29 of them at my last count. Um, to help me overcome things. And I'm trying to figure out the best way to share about that because the process, part of the process of a vision quest can be pretty grueling. So yeah, that's my homework to you. Figure out how to share that with us. So uh, so David David is saying in the chat that my homework is is to figure out how to share about that. I will, I will share, I will share. And one of the things we're gonna start doing more of um, is I miss a process that we used to do years and years ago, well, it's it. I don't necessarily know how to do it on Zoom, but uh, I call it breakthrough, like breaking through things. Um, I I, uh, I, I want to bring that specific training back into um, our our group because I do think that there's some stuff that we can do that is pretty profound. Melvin raised his hand. Melvin, tell me, sir, what's on your mind? Yeah, just 13 seconds, and I wanted to go before Omar, so he's the last one we hear from. Um, Inter-American Education Consortium nonprofit. So I am, you know, we're already successful. And what I'd like to do is request your help. I know everyone is busy, busy, busy. So think about your connections, think about your relationships because we need those and, and we need them before we go looking at the funding partners and what they bring to the table. So if you uh, can, can think about that, if you have uh, information, Melvin at techranchaustin.com. Uh, put it in the community for us. And uh, thank you very much, Kevin. Yeah. And one of the things I'll say is, so Melvin's the acting executive director of the, uh, of the nonprofit tech ranch has a nonprofit under the tech ranch um, trademark. There are four different organizations. One of them's a 501 C three nonprofit. For those of you all that don't know what 501 C three means, it's a certain uh, designation legally in the United States. It means that uh, that uh, the nonprofit can receive resources and give tax benefits back to other organizations. One of the things that um, I'll I'll take from Melvin's call out about that is, you know, especially if we want to do these cross country type of projects, you know, between say Texas and Uzbekistan as an example, there are funding vehicles that are available. But sometimes uh, Melvin's team is really small. You could actually find something, you know, you might find a grant that you say, hey, wait, Toyota has a grant for this type of work. Why don't y'all go after that? You don't have to even write the grant. You can just say, hey, Melvin, here it is and hand it off to him. And he'll put it through a process that they've refined and stuff like that. That's a great thing to do. So, um, yeah, let's see. Uh, uh, Yakovir is actually mentioning about, uh, about, um, Thanksgiving Day and stuff like that. And I, I think that we're going to actually do a, a that's going to be on a Thursday. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to want to do a VO Weekly. So we'll do that. And we'll actually talk about that during Thanksgiving. Um, in fact, Jello, remind me, <laughs> let's actually have the, the Thursday of Thanksgiving be a Thanksgiving special. And we'll definitely talk about that. Um, cool, cool, cool. All right, well, Omar, did you have anything profound you wanted to say before we closed it up? Since uh, it's so good to see your smiling voice. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that I have anything profound to say, but just hi, everybody. And I'm glad to, that I was able to make the last part of this. Yeah. So Omar is pulling together. He's um he's our investment expert. He is pulling together a bunch of deals. Um, we're going to start announcing a little bit more about that sort of stuff in the coming weeks about uh, you know how to help uh, get your ventures funded and stuff like that. We have um, Omar has actually had a uh, VO weekly in the past where he went over his funding checklist. We'll do that a few weeks out again, you know, so we can start that process and stuff like that. But um, yeah, we're working on different ways of, of uh, moving forward with that as well. Uh, we'll be announcing a, a foreign direct investment deal that I, I helped drive myself sometime again soon. I mentioned a little bit about it a few weeks ago. 
more than likely I'll be in Argentina in December because of it, because it's moving forward. And um, part of the value of the network is that, that uh, and Omar sees this with his work that he does in the Middle East, you know, between the United States and the Middle East. I'm doing this um, historically between, you know, English and Spanish speaking Americas. And now since I just recently went to Uzbekistan, some interesting stuff, you know, that I think is going to be able to show up there. Uh, we'll, we'll be exploring that together. So take advantage of that with us. All right, well, um, I tell you what, what we're going to do is we'll call it. Thank you, Omar, by the way. And uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you, guys. We need, we, need to, we need to get together. Let's plan on uh, hanging out tomorrow. <laughs> Omar and I have been like running so fast. We haven't really gotten to interact with each other uh, very much. It's kind of like, uh, you know, he went to the Middle East. I went to Uzbekistan. And now we're trying to figure it out all the way together. Hey, if um, if you have anything, if you want to join our email list, join our mentor list, you want to become a country manager for a specific country. Country manager means you're kind of paying attention to the country that you might live in or your um, the, yeah, where you come from or a place. It's not a formal, it's not really formal, but we have kind of an overview about how to plug in. Because part of what we're recognizing is a lot of times there's an entrepreneur that's sitting in a different country that says, hey, if the following thing was possible, it would be valuable to the network in the following way. Um, that, uh, that information is all on that one page. So please join us there. Um, we're, we will update this page in the next few weeks with a pathway of applying to be a part of the community as well. So you might hold this URL. It's done, that process is not listed on there just yet, but it will be updated very soon because we have a new web person that's now managing that whole process. So, but coming to this page, you know, it's always an honor to be a part of a group of entrepreneurs that are driven by vision and values as all of y'all are especially those of us that are choosing to take on the most difficult things and the eternal conversations that are blocking us. Recognize this thing about learned helplessness. You know, you go back to that video and see how easy within two minutes, within two minutes, the, uh, the, the teacher was able to induce learned helplessness in others in the most simplest of exercise. When you recognize that, you'll know that you can actually start to become aware to uncover it so that you can take on the challenges of what you might be facing as an entrepreneur. Leverage us as well. Leverage the uh, the entrepreneurs uh, around you as well. That's what the community site will be more about and to take advantage of that whole process. So with that, though, uh, let's go change the world for the better together. Y'all take care and we'll sign. We'll be here next week. Uh, you're signing off for now. Take care. <laughs>